everyone, this is Charles Clinton and I am currently a PGY2 in internal medicine in Savannah, Georgia. I have a previous cardiology residency training experience from Costa Rica and I was already performing echocardiograms on my own over there. So now I got my hands on these handheld devices. I think that to date the most cost effective probe out there for me or anyone wanting to see the heart and the rest of your uh, body is gonna be the VSCAN Air SL. This is gonna be the short version of this video so it's gonna be very focused and I would recommend you to go to the long version of this uh, video which you'll see the uh, link in the description for this video and possibly at the end of this video for any learners or anyone that is trying to advance on the learning curve so any and you might think uh, you need a little, little more explanation go to that video this is gonna be the quick version right over here so let's go into the action so here you have B mode and this is gonna be a long axis per external view you can see that the image is pretty crisp it is pretty clear and of course there I did have the gain setting a little higher the way you will reduce the gain setting will be uh, just dragging your finger on the app on the phone from right to left and that's gonna generate a image that any cardiologist won't even know with which device you actually got this so yeah pretty good image as you can see there now let's go on to M mode this is M mode same long peristernal here you can measure all the diameters and you can get with echo calc or any of your um, calculation app which usually they are free you can put in those numbers you can get you can know if the patient has hypertrophy if it's eccentric if it's concentric and also if um, what else you can see the mass for the heart right which that will help you know a little more about that or if there's dilation left ventricular dilation so those are some things you can do we already talked about b mode we talked about m mode now let's look at uh, look at a color doppler so you also have color doppler this color doppler is not just checking off the box this color doppler is great color doppler why because in someone like me that i don't have any comorbidities i'm physically active healthy in general you can even detect trivial pulmonary regurgitation look at it right over here here we have systole right and diastole let's go again this is gonna be diastole right over here and diastolic pulmonary regurgitation this right here is gonna be it you won't be able to get that with most handheld ultrasound devices that have color doppler that they just checked off the box but it's something that you you see it and you're like I don't even know what to do about this right so with the cardiac setting you have the adequate Nyquist limit set there and you already see that you can actually cross it if you get a good image here we can have see the Mercedes Benz sign on the left of the image and of course remember that I took my own focus or my own cardiac assessment so this can even improve don't expect th these to be the best images you can get but it's giving you a good idea right so this gonna be it's going to be spectral Doppler here you can see pulse wave Doppler of the uh, right ventricular outflow tract it once again is clear you can see how it actually works you can, when you read the book explaining how spectral Doppler works and whenever the flow is laminar that the outer part is well marked and the inner part is very faded this is what you're seeing right over here you can actually measure velocities here real good okay this is pulse wave Doppler so this is gonna be a limitation with most handheld devices because most of them will only have the pulse wave Doppler if you want continuous wave Doppler you have to do uh, more right you have to do more you have to get those that are very big that need a, a iPad or tablet and have a cord that would defeat the purpose for what I understand would be handheld so for now they only have pulse wave and yeah this is the best you can get here you can ha have a short a short axis 
and this is gonna be at mid level this is gonna be at the level of the base so here's the a mitral valve and here you can see the papillary muscles then we can see right over here apical four, four chamber it's gonna be pretty good as you are seeing the best image is gonna be this one so it's also operator dependent so the, I had to take these images within 20-25 uh, minutes I was between seeing patients so they're not going to be the best you can get but you're seeing that these are pretty darn good images okay and now you're seeing a new addition to this we already talked about pulse wave yes but you're seeing now a diastolic function so you can measure e wave a wave deceleration time and you might also say but where's the electrocardiographic tracing yes that is a limitation with basically all handheld devices with the exception of you having to go and buy one of those that is double priced that has a cord that has a an ipad or a tablet those do have cap capability for ekg but do you really need it probably not in 90 to 95 percent of those patients you don't need uh, to actually have the ekg tracing although it would be nice and i'm sure that ge will have this within the next five years based on the rapidity of how they're moving and here we have a four a apical four we just rotated the probe a little bit and you can see that we're measuring the max velocity out the uh, left outflow tract okay if you want to if you need a continuous wave and you think that flow is very high end or high you'll see a lot of artifact here you'll know that there's a limitation and you'll just go and get a card based device but this does the trick for 95 percent or more of your patients this is going to be an apical three chamber view once again we see very trivial uh, mitral regurgitation on this one and this is what i'm talking about right over here you can see that right here you can't even calculate a vena contracta because that doesn't it's so small you shouldn't it's that's the recommendation right but look at the quality of these images and now we're going to see the focus right ventricle you can see there it's great great image quality and now we're going to see uh, measurements of the right ventricle right here with the calipers it's normal here you can see apical two chamber normal a little bit foreshortened i should have gone one is uh, intercostal space down flow great assessment and this is going to be subcostal we're wrapping this up this is inferior vena cava collapsibility normal this is going to be right ventricle a normal function you can even measure the right ventricular free wall right here look at tapsy crisp normal and here you can see respirophasic variation with the uh, vena cava and to finish this is going to be the liver so of course you just you can also see the liver other organs there's other presets so this is abdominal preset looking at the liver and here i'm looking at the gallbladder and this is the gallbladder neck so i thank you for your time and i actually never thought uh, there would be a time where stethoscopes would not be necessary well the future is here now i have left the stethoscope and just had the ultrasound and there's no need for the stethoscope if you know how to use the ultrasound so thank you very much see you in the next